social producer at Search Engine Journal, and this is SEJ News Live. We're here every week at 3 p.m. Eastern to share the digital marketing news of the week and more. We'll be getting started shortly after giving people some time to start filtering in. But in the meantime, let us know where you're joining us from. It doesn't take long for new SEO best practices to become outdated, irrelevant, and even harmful to your SEO efforts. With constant Google algorithm updates, changes in the ways we search, and shifts in technology, it can be a full-time job just to keep up with the changes in SEO. So that's why this week SCJ published a completely updated SEO guide written by experts in the industry. From how to build a cohesive strategy to algorithm updates and the future of search, our newly updated guide covers everything you need to know in the SEO world. While it's mostly aimed at beginners, there's plenty of knowledge for you old hats too. And we've also invited the experts who contributed their time and expertise to this guide to join the SEJ audience live on Facebook with our SEJ Live series. These 15 to 30 minute chats will be held live on the SEJ Facebook page over the next few months, every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. The experts will be answering popular questions about their guide topic, and they'll also be taking live audience questions during the session. Eric Inga kicked us off yesterday with a great live session on what to do when things go wrong in SEO. Join us for our next one on next Tuesday, September 13th, to hear Brian Harnish answer questions on local SEO. We have the full schedule up on searchenginejournal.com. Check out the link that will be added in the comments to see who else is coming up. Are you happy Google is likely going to is likely going to penalize sites for interstitials? We posed this question to our readers on social media this week. A resounding 80% said yes, they are happy. When I originally posed this question on Monday, I wasn't sure how the results would turn out. Are marketers nervous about how this, affect, this will affect their work? However, I think with the plethora of information we've had detailing these changes lately, as well as having advance notice of the change has quelled a lot of the industry fears. And it makes sense. Who likes having ads ruin not only our own user experiences, but also making our customers unhappy? So what do you think? Uh, are you happy that Google is likely going to penalize sites for interstitials? Uh, comment now and let us know. And now for your digital marketing news of the week. There's been some discussion amongst SEOs as to whether or not a Google algor algorithm update occurred last week. Concern was raised when multiple SEOs reported seeing alarming fluctuations in the sites that they monitor. So did Google update its algorithm last week? The closest thing that we have to an answer is a statement from Google's John Mueller, who addressed the question in a Google Webmasters Hangout session. Mueller said, it wasn't Penguin, but we do roll out a lot of updates over time, sometimes multiple updates. This isn't the kind of update that we would announce. Google hasn't released a Penguin update in years, and that's why whenever there are major changes in search traffic and rankings, everyone wants to know if the latest Penguin update has rolled out. I think that we can feel safe knowing that when Google does update its Penguin algorithm, the company will make a public announcement just as it is done with all preceding Penguin updates. A new advertising experience called Shop the Look is now available to AdWords advertisers. Shop the Look makes it possible to sell clothing directly in Google search results pages. Shop the Look is an experience designed for searchers who are ready to make a purchase but aren't exactly sure what brand they want to buy. For example, if you're in the market for new gym clothes, you can type in a generic term like gym clothes for men. Google will then return a carousel full of clothing models wearing various brands of gym attire. If you see an outfit you like, tap on the image to bring up a page with shopping ads for each item the model is wearing. As an added bonus, Google will even recommend visually similar pieces of clothing. Time will tell, but there may be no better way to convert than having the option to buy immediately after searching for your product. This update could end up being a boon for online retailers. And best of all, if you're already running a shopping campaign that's optimized for mobile, there's nothing extra to do. Your product ads are already eligible to be displayed in the new Shop the Look category. 
The new ad experience first began as an experience, uh, experiment launched during Fashion Week, but it is rolling out this week to all retail advertisers. If you're not paying attention to what people are saying about you online, then now is the time to start because local searchers are about to take notice in a huge way. Reviews from the web are being added to Google's knowledge panel in search results. This update is available worldwide on mobile and desktop. Knowledge panels will curate content from critic reviews, best of lists, and customer reviews to be surfaced with the, within the business listing. Up to three sites will be included in total. Should this be a concern for business? Not if they're providing the best experience they can for every customer who walks through their door. In fact, having testimonials show up in your business listing and search should really be seen as a great thing for businesses. Google has long had a policy in place warning webmasters against unnatural, low quality, or keyword rich widget links. In fact, the policy has been in place so long that it's become a fairly common SEO best practice. So why is it in the news again this week? Well, Google has taken it upon itself to reiterate this policy, specifically warning against unnatural links. Unnatural links are those that are built into a widget and automatically placed on a site unbeknownst to the site owner. Often they contain keyword rich anchor text as well. And the worst part is site owners have no control over it. So even though the site owner may be unaware they're publishing links on their site in a black hat fashion, Google will still be penalizing the use of unnaturally placed links. Upon being hit with such a penalty, Google will notify the site owner through the search console. Again, this policy has been in a place for years. Uh, Google is just now reminding everyone that it's still in effect. So what does this mean for the amount of widget links on the web? Maybe Google is about to ramp up in efforts penalizing them. This is just pure speculation, but you have to think there must be a reason why Google is deciding to remind everyone about an old policy. So, what sort of things would you like to see in future episodes of SEG News Live? We'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments. Um, I love you guys being involved. It's so exciting to see the comments pop up um, while I'm kind of watching my face right here. So thank you for joining us. Tune in every Friday on Facebook at 3 p.m. Eastern time for our look at the digital marketing news of the week. Or you can make it even easier by subscribing to live notifications. As soon as this broadcast ends, click the live notification button. It'll let you know the next time we start a live broadcast. If you're watching this after we record, you can also click the down arrow in the top right corner of the box and, you're, uh, um, of the box, and you can subscribe to live notifications there. And that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great weekend.